Growing up, my mom and I used to walk everywhere in the city. And one of the things she always told me was, make sure that when you cross the street, you look both ways. Twice. Now, as a kid, this didn't make sense to me. Why look twice? Why isn't one time sufficient? The answer, inattention. Inattention is something that tends to get us in trouble. And redundancy is a great way to build robust systems. It may be the difference between a successful street crossing and an unsuccessful one. Well, with momentum, the same principle applies. A lot of market participants become inattentive and miss the good news of companies. And if we could somehow target those stocks that people are just not paying attention to, then we could potentially earn higher returns. In this video, I'm going to go over how a momentum investor might go about targeting those stocks that are being ignored while potentially avoiding the lottery stocks to build a robust and winning momentum strategy. You've heard me say that momentum is the underreaction to good news. So if this is the case, is there anything we could do to potentially target those stocks that are truly being ignored and suffer from underreaction? Well, it turns out that there's actually a pretty good way about doing this. In a 2014 paper, Frog in the Pan and Continuous Information and Momentum, the authors explore this inattention effect by measuring inattention using information discreteness measures. Now, why is it called Frog in the Pan? You've probably heard that if you put a frog in a pan of boiling water, the frog is gonna jump out immediately. But if they were to be placed in a pan with cold water and then slowly heat up the water, the frog is gonna stay in the pan and eventually die. Oh my god! Oh jeez! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is analogous to the frog in the pan momentum since the essence of this strategy is to look for those stocks that are slowly grinding up, hopefully to their fundamental value, instead of jumping all at once to a certain target price. Here's Alpha Architect CIO Jack Vogel explaining. So it might be the case that a continuous stock is better because investors are paying less attention to this stock with continuous information. So let me give you two examples. Stock one is going to be called Boring Big Box. And Boring Big Box is a retail store that's selling goods that a lot of people think might be going out of business due to online sales. However, it's up 100% and it's just been slowly grinding up, let's just say a little bit, 50 basis points every day for the past year, and it's up 100%. Alternatively, stock two, we're gonna call Exciting Biotech. And Exciting Biotech is a stock that's up 100%, but its path is definitely different. So it was just kind of grinding along and then it all of a sudden got FDA approval for a new drug and popped up 100% in one day. So Frog in the Pan is a measure to try to identify which of these two paths is more continuous. So in our example, Boring Big Box is up 100%, but it has continuous movement day to day, whereas Exciting Biotech has this jumpy momentum. So all else equal, if we had to pick one of the two stocks, Boring Big Box or Exciting Biotech, we would want the more continuous one, which in our example is Boring Big Box. Think of discreteness as jumpiness in stock price action, while continuity is the slow but steady move in stock prices. As Jack mentioned, this continuity in price can serve as a proxy for stock market participant inattention. In this case, a slower moving stock can be thought of as a stock that's getting less attention, while a jumpier stock seems to be a stock that is getting lots more of attention. Going back to the paper, this is one of the main findings. Empirically, discrete information coincides with increased turnover, as well as higher media coverage, more management press releases, and larger earnings surprises. These relationships suggest that discrete information attracts attention. But continuous price movements can represent inattention and can even fool analysts as their forecast errors are larger following continuous information. This persistence in returns due to behavioral errors is really the essence of momentum investing. But how does a portfolio of frog in the pan momentum stocks behave? Well, the authors put this to the test by running crisp data from 1927 to 2007 to find out that over a six month holding period, momentum increases monotonically from negative 2.07% in the discrete information portfolio to 5.94% in the continuous information portfolio, meaning that there's an 8.01% difference between long short discrete momentum portfolios and long short continuous momentum portfolios over six month holding periods. 
That's crazy. And not only is the return difference significant, but continuous portfolios are also persistent and longer lasting due to their continuous nature. Additionally, when adjusting for other risk factors, the alpha of the continuous portfolio is much greater than the alpha of the discrete one. Which leads me to my second point. Targeting continuous stocks is potentially as important as avoiding the lottery stocks. See, some of these jumpy stocks can be thought of as lottery stocks or stocks that some use as a gambling vehicle. In the paper, maxing out stocks as lotteries and the cross-section of expected returns, the authors find that investors may be willing to pay more for stocks that exhibit extreme positive returns and thus these stocks exhibit lower returns in the future. When I say lottery stocks, you probably have some images of certain stocks that have been used as gambling vehicles in the past. As you can guess, these stocks are typically not good investments as investors seem to systematically overvalue them and overestimate their chances of success. Interestingly enough, this paper test this by examining the performance of these lottery stocks defined as those that have extreme market movements measured by their maximum daily return over the past month called max stocks in this paper, which sounds an awful lot like discrete stocks in our previous paper. The finding is that average raw and risk adjusted return differences between stocks in the lowest and highest max deciles exceed 1% per month, which is consistent with the frog in the pan conclusion regarding discrete stocks. So what? Let's just avoid lottery stocks, right? The main problem here is that a lot of these lottery stocks tend to creep into our momentum filters. After all, these stocks have probably jumped run a lot, garner a lot of attention, and probably have great returns using certain look back periods. And therefore, adjustments need to be made. In conclusion, and according to these findings, a momentum investor might want to avoid the lottery stocks while investing in those continuous, slow moving stocks that are potentially not getting a lot of attention and therefore are better candidates for momentum. And remember, at the end of the day, momentum is trying to do one thing, in my opinion, and that is to exploit the inattention of market participants. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and more importantly, share this video with a friend. If you want more content like this, you can head to alphaarchitect.com slash subscribe, and there make sure to subscribe to the Alpha Architect blog. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Coffee Hour with Jose. I'll see you next time.